Hey guys, Chris Cantelmo here with a, another vibration. This is the part two of the purification process. Now, part one was, I'm, I'm sorry, the first time I posted this part, it got taken down by YouTube. I don't know exactly why. So let, let me start by saying that in this video, I'm not going to actually, I, I, I think the reason it might have been taken down is because if there's, there's one, sem, it's, you have to be careful in this step. It's, there's one dangerous step in the purification process. And that's when you, after you, when, when after part one, right, there's the bark. You got it in your crock pot. All right, you leave it to boil. Leave it to heat up. And then what you do is you pour it out of there and you, and you put it in. You put it in a, um, and that's, I've already added a little bit of nap to that, but basically you pour it into a, um, a jar like that. And then what you have to do is you have to add a base to it. And that's sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide is what's used. And when you, whether or not you're working with um, purifying DMT from root bark or anything else, anytime you add, a solid base to water. If you add sodium hydroxide to calcium hydroxide crystals to water, it heats up because when it when it dissolves, it's an exothermic process. Exothermic means heat releasing. And it gives off a lot of heat. In fact, if you add the sodium hydroxide too quickly, you can actually reach the boiling point of water. So the water can boil up, steam can come up, and it's got sodium high base in it. It's like the sort of the, you have to think of a base as the equivalent of acid, just in the other direction. It's just as it's just as it'll burn you just as much as an acid, as battery acid, this stuff. So you have to be really careful. So now, so I'm not going to show you how to add the base because I don't want YouTube to think that I'm you know saying anything that isn't, um, I'm trying to give you guys, I know, here, here's the deal. We all know that everyone's going to be doing it out there. I went to Yale. I've got a degree in biochemistry and biophysics from Yale. You want somebody like me to tell you guys how to do this. This is the, the uh, I like this stuff. Okay, I got it off Amazon. So here's the deal. After you pour out of the into a mason jar, you want to use uh, the, the amount that I put in here, I got out about, uh, I don't know, about 200 ml, something like that. Basically, the deal is you want to add about 80 grams of sodium hydroxide per liter of the water that comes out of here. You got to do it real slowly. You got to mix it in slowly. Add a little bit at a time. Stir it up. Add a little bit at a time. Stir it up. A little bit at a time. Stir it up. Don't let it heat up. Don't let it boil. Just take it slow. It might take you 10 minutes to stir it all in. That's what you want to do. And then once you've, once you've done that, then you just take your naphtha You take your naphtha. You don't need to. Me you don't need to get crazy measuring out. You just, you just take your naphtha, and you pour it in like this. You know what? You just pour it in like that. And I like to. I. I'm, I. I don't want to waste this right now because I've already got some in there. But basically, you just pour it in. And then you'll see the naphtha sits on top of, this, of the, the water part is the dark part on the bottom and the naphtha's on top. And what happens is, it's quite interesting. When, before you, you add the base to this, when it's pH, it's a low pH, the DMT likes to be dissolved in the water. And a little bit, might dissolve in a naphtha, but not much. It stays in the water. But when you increase the pH to pH 12 by adding the sodium hydroxide, 
Then the DMT is just as happy in here as in here, but the water doesn't want it anymore. So when DMT, DMT dissolves in here, it can't get back out. So it all stays up here. So after you add the naphtha to the DMT, to the, to the solution, to the, to the basified solution, once this is pH 12 and you add an ap naphtha, all the DMT dissolves in here and it can't really get back out. So over a few hours, add some, add some naphtha. Wait, wait about three hours. And when you add a naphtha, you can, you don't wanna really, you don't wanna shake it up, but you can just do kind of one of these, stir it up a little. You see, it might get a little cloudy. You get some bubbles sort of formed in there. And then you let it sit and it, it'll separate. And then you can, you can, if you go now to the part three, you can see what to do next. So, uh, this is, uh, it's very simple. You can see it's a very simple process. So hopefully this will stay up there. Guys, be careful. You want to be careful. The, 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 you know that naphtha is flammable, but be careful with naphtha. But it's just like, you know, if you're going to, if you oil paint and you want to clean your brushes, you, you would use naphtha to clean your brushes. So you don't have to, you know, you have to be just as careful as, as a painter, as an artist. Artists don't often blow themselves up or burn themselves. You got to be careful. You got to use your head. The naphtha, it's, it's the, the, the stuff you use. I mean, I'm sorry, the um, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, it's, it's no more caustic than, than you get a lot of uh, industrial uh, drain uncloggers that you buy. So, so you got to be careful with that stuff. You don't want to get it all over. You don't want to get it in your eyes. It's, if you do get some on, you wash your hands off with, with uh, water. Just rinse your hands good. It feels, if you have it on your skin, you can feel it underwater because it, it, your hands get real slippery. It's real soapy feeling. So you just rinse your hands until, until that soapy feeling is gone, and then, and then the base is off your hands. So uh, if, I, if you have any questions after viewing this, just let me know in the comments, and I'll address them. See you.